Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. Today's video is going to be on airplane repair. Let me go upstairs, get a little bit dirtier shirt on. Come on down, let's get started. Alright everyone, welcome back to the shop. Uh, this is the first time I've been down here in a couple weeks. I had a lot of things going on outside of flying airplanes. Uh, you know, work. Um, so anyway, this video is going to be about uh, my uh, C-47. It's a Hobby King C-47, and I've flown it probably, I don't know, a dozen times. And it's a good flying plane. It's, you know, it's not the best thing in the world, but it, it's still a good flying plane. All right, I flew it during our Wounded Warrior uh, event we have uh, once a year uh, at our club. Now I'm going to kind of explain everything on what happened and how we're going to do the repairs. Yes, it was not it was not a good flight. Well, the flight was good. It was a landing. All right, what happened was it, the winds were not. It was not a good day for wind out the flying field. Our flying field is north south orientation, and we had a wind coming out of the east, about 10 to 15 miles an hour gusts up to 20. So it was it made for real, some really sketchy bouncy air. And you'll be able to see that in the video. Um, so the, the takeoff itself, the first takeoff, was not good. Uh, what happened, it did a little ground loop. That, uh, I'll see if I've got some decent video of that. I'll throw that in somewhere. Um, what happened was it, it lifted it lifted the upwind wing uh, just as it was starting to lift. And, of course, touched the downwind wing to the ground. And you know what happens on that. Nothing happened to the plane. You know, it stayed belly side down. Everything was good with that one. Taxied it back over, stepped out into the field instead of being alongside of it because I wanted to get a really good view of what was going on with the plane on a takeoff. Uh, second takeoff, fine. Not a problem at all. Uh, went off, flew it. Um, and we'll see how well the video, because I'm going to have to do a lot of editing. Uh, it was the first time I used this camera, my Lumix. Um, and it kept getting in and out of focus because of the sky. The sky was just, it was, it was, too, it was too much cloud in the sky and it was having an issue trying to focus on the plane. Um, so it will be heavily edited. It's about a, kind of, it was about a three and a half minute flight, so it'll probably be about a, you know, a one minute flight for you guys. You know, likey wind. <laughs> Maybe, I, like I was half tossed the court. <laughs> oh, that wind just picked that side up. I can't really see nothing. I flew it a few times and then uh They just wanna keep flying, man. Here's what happened. When I was coming in um, the way the wind was tumbling past us because it was going through the pit area so wherever all the cars were parked uh, our canopy so it was tumbling through um, so it just made for some really choppy air to land into so when I was coming in uh, what it was doing it was changing pitch of the airplane uh, just because some places it was tumbling over some places so 
just before I touched down, it started shoving the nose down and I was still on throttle, full up elevator. And when it hit, didn't break the landing gear, it just flipped it down in its nose. And when it flipped it down in its nose, uh, the prop hubs just shattered. So what it did is it bent both motor shafts coming out front. Uh, one of them, I could fly it the way it is. The other one's a little bit more. So what this video is gonna be is about taking those things out and showing you how I get them fixed. So let's get started. Let me go ahead and get everything angled in on down here. <clears throat> Excuse me, and zoomed in for you guys. And let's see how well everything comes apart. So, taking the motors out, because on this C47, the motors spin in opposite directions. I may be wrong, but I'm probably right. Uh, I believe that the, uh, uh, the DC3's motors spun in the same direction. So, uh, what I'm going to do for replacement props, because they no longer make props for this, uh, Motion RC and many of you guys have dealt with Motion RC in the past and Jeff's custom RC uh, you're I know you're a huge fan of uh, Motion um, my background with Motion RC is when they first got started in 2012 uh, they opened up shop a little over a quarter mile away from the uh, from the facility that I used to work at I was an operations manager uh, and because we did indoor flying at the large facility, it was, it's a huge indoor sports facility. It's like 175,000 square foot, but we, they've got a full size, uh, FIFA soccer field. So it's huge venue. Um, so anyway, when they opened up their shop just down the road, uh, I went down and introduced myself, invited them down to come on in and fly. They stopped down a couple times, but because they were building a company, they just didn't have the time, uh, to come down, you know play with us for about three hours you know a week but uh, uh, super nice people to deal with and for me I just go and pick it up uh, they moved a few years ago to a larger facility as their business was growing and as you as you can very well know if you if you go to their website they're starting to get into gas now so they're, they're going big um, but uh, you know it's it's a it's a five minute drive so all I do is I just pretty much just you know put the order in for pickup run over there the next day and just pick it up so but uh, so if anybody out there and this is not paid this is not paid promotion uh, very good company good people to work with uh, and they stand behind their products so so motion RC I'll leave a link down in the description so anyway I've got to get the props from motion because they do make an 8.6 uh, three blade prop um, it, the thing is it just spins in one direction I mean so that's that's no big deal. I just got to make sure that this motor is hooked up, and I've got to I've got to I believe this one was hooked up correct, and this one was hooked up to spin backwards before I because I know I know which motor's bent. So that's the one where I've got to hook it up where I switch the red and the black. So. Um, so I want to see how it spins, so I'll throw it on this side first. This one has a little tweak to it I want to address, but uh, I'll hook it up to this one first, make sure it's going to spin before I even uh, put it back inside. Um, so anyway, let me 
see if I can show you and I don't even know how well you'll be able to see it yeah you see that little bit of a spin to it it's probably off about I don't know 30 thousandths run out on it so uh, what my plan to do on this one is I'm gonna try to do it simple first uh, which means because there was not much force thrown upon this one I'm gonna see if I can just tweak it by hand it's really not the right way to do it but it, it is it's not a, it's not a strong uh, it's like tool steel shaft it's just some I like to call it Chinese because you really don't know what it's made out of uh, but it's designed to flex like that and I don't know if you can really see it from there I mean I can I can just look at it and see it but it's uh yeah it's bad so anyway let me get everything set up and see if I can run you guys through how I get these things bent back into shape it's going to be between what I can do with this and my little vice all right as wrong as this may be I think I'm going to try to do this without even getting it set up in here first I just want to see how well just by holding it in my hand I can flex this shaft back because I don't think it's that strong so let me go ahead and see if I can hold it down so and if you can see that how much it's rotating out I don't know if you can um, it, it's quite considerable so I'm going to rotate it back towards me so I know that's the direction it's got to get pushed away from me now let me just go ahead and just torque it and that's about half gone so let me try it again and I may just move it up to the vise next very little to go and since I know it's predominantly on this side it's got to go back so I'm going to just put this down inside and just give it a little bit of a rotation But I made it worse, so I pushed a little bit too far. So this is what I'm going to go through, and it's just a matter of just taking your time. All right, I'm just trying to get the finals on this. That one was the one that was bent the most, and that one is it's straight on. What I'm doing is I'm just taking a little nut driver and uh, putting that on the end and just using it as some extra leverage. Just because you don't have to push that much. It's just very little bit. And then you come back and spin it again so I'd like to walk you through this whole thing but it's probably been about five minutes of me just tweaking it back and forth and you're not bending it a lot you're just bending it a little all right that's about as good as it's going to get Right, so I'm happy with these now um, they're, they're all trued up again uh, you know it's probably within a couple thousands um, at the end of the shaft run out and that's going to be fine because this is where it gets attached to yeah you might have a little bit of wobble on the uh, the prop hub the, for the nut for the prop hub but uh, you know it is what it is <laughs> it's it's a foamy so this is ready to get assembled. Uh, I got to go ahead and put an order in for the, because uh, I know they still got some in stock, so I'll go upstairs and throw an order in for those. Pick those up during the week, and then I'll probably just reassemble this all off camera because, uh, you know, it, it's not that hard to do. So, um, so anyway, uh, I still have not done the maiden flight on the, uh, on the, uh, the Albatross. Or on the Warlock uh, the weather has just been horrendous here uh, I went up to the field uh, I've been up to the field twice uh, the first time was to work with the trainer that I'm gonna donate to the club had nothing but, but problems with it ended up being uh, most of the problem was uh, it was bad carburetor and I had I had another carburetor off an old uh, OS 46 put on the problem was better but it was my fuel. My fuel was uh, about two years old and it was just, it just didn't have the oomph anymore. So I got two more gallons at 30 something dollars a gallon. So that's why I, I stopped doing glow. 
Um, it's just too expensive. It's, to me, go electric with it. All right, I just got back from my little 15 minute trip. Ran over to Motion RC, got my, uh, got my propellers. That's, come on, you can focus for me. I believe in you, there you go. It's a uh, eight six three bladed props, and it was set up around a, a three millimeter hole, or no, excuse me, a four millimeter hole down the center. So what I'm doing, I just got a little taper reamer. I'm just coming in and very carefully, because you don't want to speed this up, very carefully opening that up so it's large enough, and see how well you can see with this if it focuses nicely. You can see where it's got like a little hex pattern around it. Uh, that was how it kept the uh, the nut in place on the prop. That's how it locked in. Um, so what I did was I've got my little expanders, my little reamers. Uh, this is the eight mil that's going on the eight millimeter shaft. So now once this is set up, I'm just gonna go ahead and very carefully uh, get it all ground back into place uh, with the eight mil and then I'll show you hopefully how well everything fits. All right, let's go for the test fitting. Very nicely. And that's how you can do it. And the whole thing, like I said, if you got the right tools and you take your time, you can get it. How well this is all balanced out, um, I'll bring a prop uh, balancer down here. And then, you know, I think I've actually got it over here. And yes, I do. So I, I, I hardly ever use these things. So I've got the little one you can hold between your fingers, um, and that's normally what I do. Let me uh, let me get this one set up. This is the old top flight. I probably haven't used this one in years. Uh, see how well it balances. All right, I know that it's a little bit heavier on one blade, and what we're going to do is we're going to find out which blade or blades it's heaviest on. And then I'll show you how I'm going to work on trying to get this balanced out a little bit more precisely. So we can see it roll around. It's not a whole heck of a lot. And because it doesn't rock back, it doesn't have a really heavy blade. So these two blades uh, are, when you have the combined amount of weight they are compared to this tip. So say that these are half as heavy as that, if that makes any sense at all. Because what you're doing is you're trying to figure out the way it wants to balance. So I've already sanded the tips just a little bit just to get rid of the, the stuff I needed to. What my plan is going to be is because I'm painting these tips yellow. So I can come in on these two. I'll mark which one. On the two down here, I'll go ahead and... It's my phone's ringing. Somebody loves me. Um, or I'm fired. Alright, uh, so anyway. <laughs> back to the prop. Um... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape it off and I'm going to spray on one coat on all three of these tips and then I'm going to come on the light one which is this one and then spray two coats. So that way I'm doubling up the paint and then we'll see how well uh, it all bounces out. Alright, it's all done. Uh, everything bounced out to, uh, to my approval. Um, so, you know, we're, we're going to be good to go on this one. The only issue I have right now before it goes up, I mean, it's going to go upstairs the way it is. I can't find the prop nuts. Um, they're here somewhere. I, I just got to find them. So, um, regardless, it can go upstairs and hang from the ceiling uh, just the way it is right now. These are pressed on. Uh, what I ended up pressing them on with was another uh, prop nut. It's around here somewhere. It was the same thread pitch. So, I uh, just went ahead, just screwed it on, pressed it in. So, let's do just so I can show you that they will spin they're both spinning in the same direction now and as you hear the noise that was coming from the flaps all right I'm just gonna bump it on uh, I'm not gonna spool it up all the way just so you can see that everything is spinning so they're dialed in and there's uh, there's no prop wobble So, uh, so we should be good. So anyway, sorry about that. Another problem solved. And uh, we can call this one done.